Yeah. Cool. Ladies and gentlemen, how the hell are you? Jeff Kiesel, Kiesel Guitars. I have a very special guest and probably doesn't need an introduction, but Sophie Lloyd. Hello. Hello, guys. How's it going? I'm Sophie, as Jeff said. From across the pond, as across they the would pond. say. Yes, British. Yeah. From so, London. Yeah, so where exactly are you from? I grew up in a small town called Henley on Thames where there really wasn't much of a music scene at all. It's kind of near like Reading area, it's about an hour out of London. And then I moved to London, um, God, it must be about six years ago now or something, to study uh, music at university. And I've been there ever since, but can't wait to leave now. <laughs> yeah, and you were saying like, how crazy it is like traffic and it's madness it's just so busy all the time like there's just so many people and i really want to get a dog but you can't really have a dog in london because we only have a flat so we need to move out get a big house and get a dog and That's so a flat is like an apartment oh yeah right? sorry oh, no, no, British, no, no, British I, I learned a lot from from uh, andy james you know over yeah. the years like hanging with him and like some of the things he would say and, it's very uh, specific yeah we were yeah. talking about cockney rhyming slang yeah. earlier instead of a uh, curry we say ruby murray or uh, instead of going, oh, go down the stairs, it's down the stairs, we go uh, down the apple and pears. <laughs> it's so stupid and unnecessary. It just adds like way more syllables than you need to say, but, but you have fun it's fun. It. Exactly. Yeah, and exactly. I mean, that's what, you know, a lot of life is about is finding, you know, the fun in the small things. Yeah, man. Right? Exactly. So I'm sure we're going to get this question. When did you start playing guitar? How old were you? Uh, I always say a different age, so I can't really remember, but I think I was around nine years old and um, I, you know, my parents bought me a classical guitar and I was playing it and I was like, oh, this isn't really my thing. So they got me an electric guitar like a year later or something and that's when I really, really got into it and went and went all out. But yeah, as I was saying, I did, uh, where I grew up, there really wasn't much of a music scene, so I didn't have any friends that played guitar or anything. So that's kind of why I turned to the internet was because no one in my real life like none of my family are really musicians none of my friends were musicians there really isn't like a rock music scene there at all so that's sort of why i ended up going on uh, youtube and facebook and places like that because that's sort of where i could actually put my stuff out there and uh like join the music community mm -hmm. you know compared to just you know sort of not having much in, in, in my hometown room. yeah exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> that's cool um so i know you guys are going to want to ask some questions i got a few more um but why don't you guys go ahead and type your question, and uh, one of my guys will read it um, out, and uh, either myself or Sophie will answer. I'm sure you guys have a lot of questions for her. Um, <laughs> so you said you got an electric guitar. What was that first electric guitar? The first one was a Yamaha Pacifica. I feel like it's one of those ones that like a lot of people get that like comes with the little like shitty amp yeah. and stuff that just sounds really pretty awful. But um, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. It was great. It's still, I still have it and it has, um, I put like stickers on all of the frets so I could try and learn like where the notes are on, on everything. Yeah. So it's covered in just like tape and stickers and stupid stuff. Yeah, but, but you never can get rid of that guitar. Yeah, exactly. You That's know, the thing. A, like, it's my baby. Thing. Yeah, yeah, whenever I see it, I'm like, oh, I, I haven't, it, like the strings haven't been changed for like probably about like eight years or something now. Yeah. But I'll still like, I'll still play it as soon as I go home. It's in my bedroom at my parents' house. And, it's got a special place in my heart. That's awesome. <laughs> so with Kiesel, when did you first learn about us? I mean, I know kind of how we, you know, how the connection happened. Yeah. But when did you first learn about us? Do you remember? Yeah. So it was um, a few years ago. I think I just released my Delusions EP. And um, I knew Rob Caggiano from the band Volby and he... Um, uh, I was sort of thinking about what guitar company to go with because I knew I sort of wanted to start working with someone and I wanted uh, a guitar company with a really, really good community where there's like, you know, kind of the social aspects as well and there's just a lot of care and, you know, some customization available. And yeah, Rob was like, it sounds like, um, you know, Kiesel is the brand for you, definitely. And um, yeah, he sent me your Instagram, checked it out, and I was like, whoa, these are fucking cool. That's so, awesome. yeah, and I just love the way you could like customize everything because I'd never seen that before. It was always like you go to a shop and you kind of choose what they have available, but be actually being able to like be like, whoa, what can I create out of all of this? Like, how can I piece this together and make my own instrument? And that was this one, and obviously that became my artist series um, that came out last year and, and oh, sold out. Mad. And sold out. Thanks. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, that's sort of why I absolutely fell in love with it. And like, I hadn't played one before I got this one, so it was a bit of a shot in the dark. But um, I wanted to, you know, take the chance, and I got this, and it was just, you know, 
it fit me so well, you know, it was just perfect. I always say there's a little contour for my boob as well. So it's <laughs> nicely shaped. So, <laughs> but yeah, it's um it just yeah, it's just perfect when I got it. The the playability was absolutely amazing. It was the tone was great, so I just knew that was the company that I, you know, wanted to be with. That's awesome. And now here we are. Here we are. And it's been great too and it was it uh Nice to finally, you know, have you guys come out, get to hang out in person. Yeah, definitely. Because, you know, email and messenger and all that is so impersonal. Even like a Zoom call helps, but, you know, to actually like oh, hang out, yeah. you know, hanging out with you guys last night was really cool. It was we, so fun. We had some fun. We got quite drunk. <laughs> <laughs> it fun. was so much fun though. It was so good. I met your dog. I met Zelda. Zelda. And yeah, Zelda. she's just a an icon. She is so sweet. Yeah, you guys hit it off. I think uh, Zelda and Chris hit it off probably even better. I know. I was very jealous, actually, of all the snuggles and things. <laughs> I was too. I'm like, like, my dog doesn't want to hang out with yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> the dog disowned me for Chris. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That was rad. Um, but yeah, she's so sweet. <laughs> that's cool. Uh, my last question, and then we're going to open up for everybody else, mm -hmm. is at what point, I guess, how old were you when you were like, man, I'm actually pretty good at this and I, I want to do this. This is what I actually want to do for a living. Like, how old would you have been when you find that, that like switch clicked and you're like, I'm going to put effort in yeah. and I want to, you know, I want to be a professional guitarist. I think I was probably about 16 or something. Well, like I'd always sort of been really interested and in, that was always kind of like the dream, but it always felt a bit unobtainable. Like I said, I didn't really know any other musicians and stuff. So it didn't feel like something I could really achieve or do. And, um, I actually grew up, like I didn't study music at all before I went to uni. So I applied uh, to university. I was going to go and do um, forensic science and I got um, my, I got a scholarship to do it at a university and you know, my dad was so excited. And then like a week before I was like, mm, actually, <laughs> I think I want to be a guitarist instead. They were like, oh no, but no, they were so supportive. It was great. And that's sort of when I really took it in my stride and moved to London. And um, I think I still, like I, I've always struggled with sort of really kind of believing I'm good, if you know what I mean. So that's something I've sort of had to, like I struggle with imposter syndrome, where basically you feel like you're not, you're kind of posing as an imposter and you don't belong, like what you've achieved, you feel like it's just luck rather than like your talent and stuff. So when you say, you know, when you realize you were good, I feel like I'm still kind of, I know I'm good, but I'm still not there where I truly kind of, believe in myself and I think that's something I'm kind of still working on um at the moment but yeah no that's amazing I mean it's it's refreshing too to hear someone that has done so well and is talented yeah. and deserves where they're at and to say hey you know what like I'm not happy where I'm at I want to I want to do better I want to be better because a lot of times in this industry the people that I meet most of them that feel like they are so awesome and yeah. so amazing they're not there yeah. and they're not working harder. Yeah, exactly. So. I think it's important like not to be kind of satisfied where you where you are and always to kind of push forward. Like I remember when I was younger, I was like, oh, if I could play this like Avenged Sevenfold solo, then I'll admit I'm a good guitarist. Yeah. And then I could play it and I was like, oh, but I can't play that Dragonfall solo yet. So I can't be that good. You know what I mean? Like awesome. it's sort of, I'll always, I always want to keep pushing forward and trying new things. And like, I want to, you know, I do a lot of shred stuff at the moment, which I love. I really want to get into kind of, um, more chordal stuff like gospel and jazz and sort of be experiment with those uh, some more clean tones so that's kind of the next step on my journey i think is you know to sort of incorporate that into the rock and metal music that i love and kind of bring those two together i think would be really cool very cool that's awesome well what do you guys want to know so let's uh go ahead and hear some questions from you all from the audience mm. The fans. Let's see, Tony is asking, Sophie, what techniques are you working on currently that have challenged you? Uh, I use a lot of legato in my playing. So like the speed al alternate picking is sort of something that, um, and like economy picking and stuff, is something that I've been trying to put more into my playing to come up with some runs like that because I feel like that's sort of a skill in itself is building up that strength kind of in your picking hands. So that's something I'm working on, which I'm finding a bit of a challenge just because I'm I'm so used to just playing with legato because it, you can, you know, it's half the effort and you can go, you know, faster than you can. But I love that kind of picking tone, that attack. So that's definitely something I want to work on a little bit more. Uh, have you ever tried a headless guitar? I haven't tried. 
Did I try Headless Guitar today? No, today? we had one in the cart, and then we got, uh, Brandon had to call you to oh, do the photo yeah, shoot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I actually haven't tried a Headless Guitar yet. I, uh, I have a Headless Bass, um, which I love because it sits perfectly in my rack, so it all lines up really well, and that's really cool. So I like the little tuners at the bottom and stuff, but um, I probably wouldn't have a Headless Guitar. I like the head. I like, that sounded weird, but yeah, I like head. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> It's a rated R stream now, I'm sorry. <laughs> Kevin is asking, who are your top three guitar influences? Um, I'd say Joe Satriani is one of my top ones. Um, growing up, I was super into Avenged Sevenfold, so Brian Hayner, Sinister Gates was probably one, and Joe Bonamassa for blues as well. There's so many different ones. Steve Vai is amazing. And like Angel Vivaldi was a big inspiration for the Delusions album too. So yeah, that's like five. Sorry, I can't count, obviously. <laughs> Let's see. Are you looking at another build? Like, I guess another Kiesel build? Uh, yeah, well, I was trying to five string today, actually. And I was like, that's so cool. So I think I might put in an order for seven, a five string. Seven, 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 seven string. Yeah, five string. <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool. I sing a bass. But... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, seven string guitar. And that was really cool. I yeah. like end that low, that low string. So I think. Yeah, we're going to do a seven string. Yeah, yeah I think cool. we'll experiment with something like that. That'd be awesome. Russ is asking, I think we kind of already answered this, but Sophie, how long have you been playing guitar? Yeah, I always say a different amount, but I, I was about nine years old, so. Well, that's difficult math. 17 years. 17 years, yeah, quick math as well done. That's why I'm a musician, not a mathematician. <laughs> uh, what's your favorite uh, song from, or I guess favorite song on the Avenged Sevenfold Waking the Fallen album? Um, there's a few. to Like to play or to just listen to? To play probably, like Unholy Confessions is like the obvious one. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, probably Unholy Confessions. Is Scream? Scream's not on that album, is it? Scream's a good one. I think that's on Critical Acclaim. Yeah, I don't know. Scott is asking, have you been able to do guitar content for full time or do you have a day job? Uh, I, at the moment, I do it full time. I started out working at, um, uh, I was working at like this waffle place called Creams in uh, England, um, but then that sort of, you know, I managed to make a bit of money through like YouTube AdSense and Patreon and stuff, and now I'm lucky enough to call it my full-time job and do this as my career, which is absolutely amazing, and I'm so, you know, lucky to be able to do that. Uh, here's just a comment. Someone says, Sophie, I think you are amazing. Oh, shut up. <laughs> that's awesome thanks <laughs> Cody's asking a question for Jeff how much for a master grade pale moon ebony top depends on the model um, there's going to be some models we are not going to be able to offer that on because um, I don't have a lot of pale moon that is going to be uh, able to go into a top that'd be a question for the guys so you can give uh, you know give the guys a call and they can give you a quote that'll be beautiful though. oh yeah Pale Moon is, it's a really neat wood. It's I mean, like, stunning. Yeah, you're looking I at that and um, yeah. sitting at the builder and like messing with it. Yeah, it's so nice. Like the fretboard, I think, my next bit, maybe the seven string on my favorite Pale Moon. Ever. And we did add Pale Moon. So, a little uh, shameless plug here we added the crescent inlays to the builder and we added Pale Moon Ebony to the builder. Um, so, you can build a custom guitar on the virtual builder with both of those options. So, that's new for this week. Oh, they're very sexy. Uh, what's your favorite riff of all time? Oh god, I don't know. Um, I've forgotten all riffs now. <laughs> um, Enter Sandman's a, a really good riff that sort of springs to mind as like an early one I learnt. Like the sort of, all the Metallica stuff like Master of Puppets and, and, and Sandman and everything. Uh, I love just like hard rock, like you know some of the Blackstone Cherry riffs uh, are really cool. Um, yeah, lots of just hard rock riffs. So I'm not very good at like reeling off songs off the top of my head. It's like, you know, you forget every song known to man when someone asks you what your favorite song at that is. Too. Like, yeah, I'm like, like, hmm, what yeah, is Yeah, you know, I band? know you love this band and what's your favorite song? I'm like, ah. Uh, <laughs> you know, off the 
this, this album, like, I'm like, uh, <laughs> yeah, like, I don't know the names of I'm all so the songs, mad, yeah. but, like, I can tell you the lyrics, mm. you know? Exactly, I will sing it from start to finish for yeah. you, but um, don't ask me yeah, what it's called. You can play it, right? But you know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's a hard one. I'm kind of the same way with that. Justin's asking, Sophie, do you mostly play by ear, or do you read sheet music? Um, I kind of had to learn to read sheet music a bit at university, but I wouldn't say I'm any, particularly any good at it. It wouldn't be my kind of um, choice to read that. I use tabs a lot, but generally I'll try to play by ear. I think it's super, super important to kind of um, learn as much as you can by ear, because then you really learn like the techniques behind it and what they're doing. There's a cool function on like YouTube where you can, if you click on like the gear cog, you can um, like slow it down so you can watch the video at, like, 50% speed or something, and that's a really, really useful tool if you're trying to learn by ear. Um, because, you know, you can hear it a lot slower and you can like, kind of work it out note by note, and you'll get a much better kind of idea of what they're using, what scales they're using, everything like that. Uh, this is a question for Jeff. Provided that one is willing to pay in the 10K range, would you be willing to make a left-handed type X? Um, yeah, I mean, for that kind of money, sure. I mean, it's definitely going to take something special. And the reason for that is, you know, template wise, we don't even have any templates. Um, and why it's important to have templates is for the CNC machine, we'd have to make a set of templates that go, I should call them sub, sub templates is what they're really called. So it goes on top of the normal template and it gets sucked down and those are very expensive. And that's why I haven't made a uh, left-handed type X. It's not because I don't love you left-handed players. It's because... Mm -hmm. I can't make everything for, let's, you know, call it what it is, 3% of my customer base. So, you know, if 3% if of my customer base has access to buying it because they're left-handed, it's about what I sell is about 3% of my guitars are left-handed. How do I justify huge, you know, th multi-thousand dollar costs for something that's going to take me five, 10 years to recoup, and I'm probably going to discontinue the model in, in that amount of time. You know, not not planning on discontinuing the Type X, but you know, trends come and go, right? So, am I even going to have that Type X in five years? I don't know. That's up to you guys. You guys, you know, keep the models going by by the sales, by the popularity. And if the model dwindles, then I discontinue it. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, for the right amount of money, because um, it has to make sense for us. Uh, there's a lot of things that are are optional. You know, there's some things we wouldn't be willing to do. You know, because of pride reasons or you know, not the right thing to do. Like if somebody wanted a guitar out of all ebony, I wouldn't do that because it's going to be so heavy, mm. um, you know, like ice. Yeah. Like, oh my God, that was cool. So if you got to, <laughs> so if you got to play ice today and it ice is awesome. 13 pounds and she's gorgeous, but you would never play a set with her. Literally, yeah. I was like, after like five minutes, I was like, right, okay, I cannot do this, but it's so cool to play though. Yeah. And it sounded good, right? It sounded fucking great. Yeah, yeah like better than I thought it was. Yeah. It's made out of acrylic, did you yeah. say? It's mm -hmm. crazy. It's really, really good. Yeah, if you don't know what ice is, you can uh, Google Kiesel Ice Guitar. It's an all acrylic Aries. Uh, and the, the uh, behind this, you know, the, the reason behind the guitar was I wanted to show people how an Aries is made. Um, and so because it's clear, you can see every component in the Aries. And uh, I just thought it was a really neat guitar. We, Put a little burst on the top of it, just a little thin um, aqua um, burst with a little black burst edge on it, a little cali, and uh, it looks so dope. And it was a big hit at NAMM, and we had a lot of people trying to buy that guitar and people offering. We had a guy offer, I think it was 18000 for the guitar, and I wasn't interested in selling it for that. It took a lot of time to build, and I didn't build it to sell it, I built it to show it off, and we had a great time today with it. It was so cool, yeah. yeah. So that was cool. It's like if we sold ice, we hit. wouldn't have had that experience. Yeah. And, you know, uh, Jesse got some footage, and uh, maybe that'll be uh, going up at some point of you, uh, you know, messing around. Yeah, on it. definitely. Yeah. Frank is asking: Would glossing over a rato and finish give it an encased look, or would it be pointless? Yeah, it's not anything we could do. Um, the whole point for gloss, for me at least, and for uh, our guitars, is to have that mirror-like finish. And so, to get that mirror-like finish, you have to use, you know, the fillers, the wood fillers, the primers. And you have to fill all the voids so that you can put that gloss over there and you don't have a textured finish anymore. I totally get what you're asking. Um, it would be something we wouldn't do because I think it would look like cheap, plasticky, wooden guitar. Like I just think it would look really bad. So it wouldn't be something I'd be interested in doing. Um, I'm not saying it wouldn't look cool. I just don't have a way of pulling it off uh, to where I think it would look good and, and make it worth your money. 
Do you ever miss being a touring mus musician, or is there something else in the works to replace Marina and the Moths? Oh, Marisa and the Moths. That was my, one of my old old bands. Um, I'm doing a solo album at the moment. Um, it's sort of my first full length solo album, and um, it's really cool because it's a feature album. So each uh, song will have a different um, vocalist on it. And when that comes out, we want to tour that, get back into the sort of live music scene a bit more. We were just about to get into it and then obviously COVID hit, so we kind of had to stop. So um, hopefully we're going to be maybe towards the end of this year, maybe beginning of next year, we want to start touring that again. But I do miss it. It was a lot of fun with, with uh, Maurice and us. It was really, really fun to play live and to meet everyone. I miss that a lot. Valerie is asking, Sophie, what's been your favorite part of your U.S. visit so far? Oh, I've had so many cool moments. I'd say, if any of you guys follow me on Instagram, you'll know I recently just did a music video with Matt Heafy for, this is for my new album again, and that was amazing. Um, obviously meeting with Jeff and as well. <laughs> it was fun. It was, we had some good times. Specifically meeting Zelda, your dog, Zelda was, oh, was a big highlight. She's a nut, man. <laughs> she's great. Um, but yeah, the music video was Matt, with Matt was amazing because, you know, Trivium, I've had them on my, their posters on my wall. I've been wearing like their van t-shirts since I was a kid. So being able to kind of meet him and actually sort of jam with him, like we were like he was singing there and I was playing guitar right there. It was so weird. <laughs> it was like a dream come true. So that was a really, really cool moment. And we were at the Trivium hangar as well, which was uh, awesome. It's like in this airfield, so there's sort of like planes around. It's really cool. That's awesome. He's such a great guy too. He's so sweet. He really so is. nice. Yeah. yeah, he's lovely. He sent us loads of good places to eat and stuff. That's so. cool. I loved watching the riff outtake video recently. Anyone mastering a song can relate. How much time uh, slash takes go into a finished video on average and do you create your own backing tracks? <laughs> yeah, I'd say quite a lot of takes go into it. Like it takes me a while to practice. Um, yeah, generally we'll create our own backing tracks for the, the YouTube videos. Um, we have uh, my boyfriend and drummer Chris does like the drums for them and then I'll do the bass and the uh, rhythm guitar and we'll kind of put it all together, especially when it's uh, a medley or something like that. That's always really fun to do. Or if we're reinventing a style, we'll definitely do the backing track for um, the Instagram videos like Metal Mondays and like the shorter stuff. I'll probably just use um, a backing track online. There's a good website called Karaoke Version where you can like take out different instruments and change the levels, which is really, really useful mm. if you're learning a song. That's cool. So um, yeah, that's kind of what I'll use for the Instagram videos. And you can change the key and stuff too, which is really good. So um, yeah, but generally I'll do, um, we'll make our own backing tracks. And it does take a while when filming, like I'll spend, like I, writing the whole kind of if we're talking youtube videos writing the whole thing and learning it and filming it takes around a week for one video or something maybe a week and a half so it's quite a long process of and that's just doing that and not really doing any other anything else like any other content that's just doing the video so it's quite a lot it takes a lot of takes but obviously that's the thing with social media is like you guys don't see all the kind of you know, fuck ups and things I do wrong and everything. You just see like the final product. And um, that's sort of why I've started, I've started streaming on Twitch. And it's this thing I've been trying to get over is that feeling that you have to be perfect because you see people on Instagram and they're just shredding away and you're like, oh my God, I'll, I'll never do that. And you compare yourselves to them, but it's not a fair comparison because you don't see the, you know, the, the mess ups and all the work that's gone into it and everything like that. So that's the thing I'm trying to sort of put forward and I'm going to start doing a few more of those outtake videos because they're funny and they happen a lot. And like you say, everyone can relate to them. And I think it's important to show that side of it that, you know, it's not all perfect and great all the time. Like, you know, you do mess up. And that's the thing I, it was, I struggled to come to terms with, like for people to see me kind of in that vulnerable position of like messing up and stuff. But, um, Human element. Exactly, exactly. And that's what I love as well. When I watch people, I love it when, you know, it's, it almost makes it, if you're at a gig and they play like a wrong note or something, it's almost like kind of nice in a way. That's what makes it like live and, yeah. you know, it's sort of got that vibe. So, yeah. yeah I remember when we were, um, you know, kind of, you know, a little bit different, but uh, when we first started doing a lot of social media stuff, and this is before Facebook had Facebook Live, we would... 
you know, someone would have a camera and they would follow me around the shop and I would give a tour yeah. talking and I would fuck up. I would say things and be like, no, 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 actually this or that. And, you know, I would put that out there. No yeah. edits, just put that out there because I wanted people to feel like they were there with me. Exactly, yeah. That's so good. Like, I'll struggle when I'm doing a talky YouTube video. I'm like, hey guys, how's it going? No, that's not, that's not a shit. Hey guys, how's it going? And I'll do it like five times. It's so stupid. But yeah, like sometimes just putting it out there yeah. and sort of just having that live aspect to it makes it feel a lot more like personable and Absolutely. relatable. And that makes people get to know you more as well. So I think that's, yeah, super important. Before I forget, I want to say one thing. I did deactivate my Instagram account, the Jeff Kiesel account. So nobody hacked it. Um, and the reason why I deactivated it is I can't keep up. You know, between all of your guys' questions, whether they're direct messages, their comments, their tags, it's keeping up with the artists and what the artists are doing. And I can't keep up and, you know, still do my job at the level I need to do it. You know, because starting out, obviously, I had, you know, a lot less followers and getting more and more and more. And I think with people being home more, um, I was getting so many messages. And so, you know, talking about it with some of the guys here and stuff, we all collectively decided that. It's better for me to not have a presence on there rather than a presence where I'm not getting back to you thinking you thinking maybe I don't care about you guys or I'm ignoring you or something like that. You guys are all super important to me, but I also have an obligation for the builds that are in the works and I have to stay on top of things here, you know, whether it's running production, helping artists, doing my custom finishes, working on new projects. And so I'm just finding myself with not enough time and so I've decided at least for now to deactivate it. Um, I'm going to be posting on the Kiesel account. I've done a few posts, like just story posts, where I can post and walk away. Because I have a staff, I have a crew that can handle answering your guys' questions when they come in. So I still love all you guys. I just, I can't keep up anymore on there. And again, I don't want to, you know, come across like I, I you know, I'm not grateful or appreciate you guys. So maybe at some point I'll turn it back on, but for now it's off. Um, we've had a lot of people messaging like, hey, is everything okay? Or does Jeff know his account's down and all that? Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, so uh, anyway, that's it. So I'll still be doing these Wednesdays. So this is how you're going to get me um, to ask me a question. Um, and as, as always, I have a very knowledgeable staff, so call them. Um, and if it's something they can't answer, they're going to ask me. So I needed to throw that little nugget in there before yeah, I forget. It's a full-time job managing like a social media yeah. account. It's crazy. It is a lot of work. And you saw how many builds we have in the works. Yeah, it's crazy. It's like, you know, it's just, it's, it's nonstop. It's a madhouse. It's yeah. beautiful 15, to see. 1511, 1511 builds in the works right now. It's madness. We're, we're slamming. You guys are amazing. And yeah. uh, I, again, just, I'd rather have no presence than not getting back to you. I mean, I was getting to the point where I'm 20 weeks plus out on replying to people. It's like, it's like a bill. Yeah. You know, so somebody yeah. got a question and they ask me, and then, like, I finally get to them 20 weeks later because I was answering yeah. all my questions, but I was getting so backed up that you get to somebody and they might be like, hey, I had a question about an Aries. Can I ask you? And you're like, they waited 20 weeks for me wow. to be like, yeah, man, what's up? <laughs> and then... They, you know, they reply, well, then their reply goes all the way to the top. Well, I start at the bottom every yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. You're just too popular. That's not even that. I just, I don't have the time. Yeah, you no, know? no, I mean, I think someone doing this for a couple hours a day easily could keep up, but I can't do it for a couple hours a day. Yeah, definitely. I only get every once in a while I can do it for a couple of hours, and I kind of bang through them, and then I'm backed up again. And people, like what's crazy, I'm sure you've seen this, where you finally answer somebody and it's maybe a long time, like, mm -hmm. like I was saying 20 weeks and then I answer them and they're already typing before I can get to the next, <laughs> next person. And I'm like, Oh my God, this person like, just <laughs> like, that's crazy. Like how quickly people are getting back to me. Yeah. But then their message goes all the way back up to the top and I start at the bottom every time. Yeah. It's difficult to keep up with. It is. So. It's really hard. So, uh, just to throw that out there for you guys. Frank is asking Sophie, what amp do you use? Um, I'm sort of between amps at the moment. I've been using the uh, Diesel VH4, which is a really, really good amp, but it's just very big and bulky. Um, I've been trying out some Black Star amps, which I um, really, really like. Um, and I've been using uh, the Boss GT1000 a lot as well, especially now I'm over here in America. I can bring my amps over, so that's like a cool little foot switch that you can just like plug straight into a speaker or a PA and you get this really, really good tone from it. Um, what you guys hear on my videos a lot of the time is uh, Neural DSP as well, um, which is a guitar software for Logic. 
and I use the Nolly Archetype one, so that's sort of the signature tone on a lot of the videos and stuff. Is that purple as sick as it looks? It is, yes. 100% it is very sick. It needs to be in the hospital. Because <laughs> that, yeah, that's a Sophie Lloyd finish. That's her custom finish. Um, uh, we're going to be working on, um, so you know, figuring out a way to offer that color for you guys. You know, it's been a really popular color and, uh, you know, tying it to her name. And uh, it's it's a color that, that takes... It's quite a few steps, you know, to get it to look like that. The depth, the dimension, um, the final product. It's actually four colors, four layered colors to get that look. And what happens when we go to spray those is my guys, their goal is to do 20 guitars a day. So I have 20, 20 being primed, 20 being painted, 20 being clear coated or, or satin finished or raw toned. And when we do these, we can only do 10 in a day. So if that tells you how complicated the finish is, and so... Uh, the finish is a very expensive finish, one of our most expensive finishes, because it's you have to look at it from you know my standpoint. If in a day I can only do ten instead of twenty, that's half production. So I have to charge a lot for it because I'm not as efficient. If I'm not as efficient, we can't make as much money. So we have to supplement that by you know the delta between not getting as many out, right? So. Um, but it's so pretty. Oh, it's, so it's gorgeous. <laughs> It's a gorgeous finish. You it's know. beautiful. It's my favorite colors. Yeah, it's but it's stacked. It's four colors on there. And the dimensions and the depth of it is just so yeah, amazing. It's beautiful with the bell underneath as well. It's yeah, like, the pearl maple top. Yeah, it looks like very like a like a cloud. Yeah. yeah very cloudy. Yeah, yeah Jeff was very disappointed when I came in because it had loads of like dings in it and like marks and like craters <laughs> out of it. He was like, What have you done to it? <laughs> I'm like, Oh done? my god, she's beat. <laughs> Yeah, like their headstock does a little chip off it, so it was yeah. like, oh my god. We dialed it in, so yeah. So yeah, we, but they actually managed to like fix most of the parts and like yeah. resand their headstock and it's good as new now. It's absolutely amazing. Yeah, so. it's like, it's it's close. It's like, uh, what would they call it? Um, good from far, but far from good? Yeah. You know, one of those things, right? Like so, hot from far away. Like the yeah, there you effect, go. You yeah, 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 there you go. Yeah, like uh, uh, 20, you know, 20 feet away or whatever. It's but. beautiful. Yeah, I'm just very clumsy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh man, that's rad. <laughs> Valerie is asking, Sophie, who's watching Luna while you're over here? Oh, that's a very good question. Um, my parents, Luna is currently with my parents, which she she loves being there because um, it's a, you know quite a big house. She's got stairs to go up and down, which is very exciting for her. So yeah, she's having lots of cuddles with um, Nanny at the moment. But I miss her so much. I always just look at pictures of her and just like, give her nose a little boop. Yeah, her cat is so cute, Luna. Oh man, so cute. Uh, beautiful blue eyes. Just, yeah, right. Yeah, very, very cute. Cat. So fluffy. Yeah. I got my fix a little bit with meeting your cat as well. Um, oh yeah, um, Kayla's. Yeah, yeah, yeah my yeah, daughter yeah. Kayla came over yesterday and uh, hung out for a little bit. And brought Cardi by, and uh, so, so yeah, that got filled to, my boots a bit. <laughs> yeah, got to uh, got to hang out with Cardi. Uh, Sue Lloyd says Luna oh, says mom. hi. <laughs> that's my mom. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Hi there, how you doing? Hi, Your daughter is amazing. I'm oh. sure you already knew that, but uh, thank you so much for raising her the way you have oh. and, you know, really standing behind her for her uh, music, uh, oh. you know, passion and background. That's just so cool. Stop you to know. make her cry. <laughs> well, that's, that's really cool. You know, I mean, so many parents, you know, you, you can see the person and, you know, some people are very successful and their parents didn't stand behind yeah. them. And some of them are very successful, and their parents did stand behind them. Yeah. So thank you for being such an important part of her yeah. life. It's Thanks, Mom. <laughs> so important, it really is, you know. And, no, uh, she's awesome. She is my biggest fan. She always, she's always wearing so my cool. band t-shirt and stuff. I'm so glad she's in here. That is awesome. <laughs> sorry, cool. what was her question, though? Sorry to interrupt. Uh, she <laughs> says, Luna says hi. Oh, good. <laughs> hi, Luna. <laughs> Scott is asking, Iron Maiden versus Judas Priest, who would win in a pillow fight? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think I'm going to go with Iron Maiden just because I've, they've got, because you've got to include Eddie in this really, don't you? If it's Iron Maiden, <laughs> he's part of it. And I think he's definitely had some pillow fights in his day. He's definitely been some slumber parties. So yeah, I'm going to go with Iron Maiden, but it would be close. Sophie, what would you tell young girls who want to follow your lead? Thank you. <laughs> uh, I would probably just say, just, you know, don't be, it's, 
don't be afraid to sort of be a part of the world like sometimes it can look quite intimidating because it's a little a little bit of a boys club i think it's definitely shifting more recently like there's so many amazing female players so just stick to it if you do come up against any sort of adversities or you know if people say comments just really you know surround yourself with really good people really believe in yourself and what you're doing and um just make sure yeah you love what you're doing and push through all the hard things that might you know come come your way because it's worth it kevin is asking what's your favorite american food you'd have you've had here oh uh we've had some good good food jeff took us to top top Tacos. I want to say because I say really British, so it sounds really. No, you got to say it the way you tackles. say it. Tacos. 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 Um, yeah, we had tacos. Um, <laughs> I told you it sounds stupid. No, we had it's them, great. This, this is lunch. That this was is really why they're good. here. They're not here for you to like, like try to appease them. I mean, yeah, this yeah. is awesome. I I love like you know you guys the way you're talking. It's like, you know, I'm just having a great time. <laughs> so much fun. Good. Well, yeah, we had them, and I'm quite new to Mexican food, but the like, I had my first Mexican food about eight, about a month ago, but it's so good, and I'm really, really into it now. So I think the tacos would be up there. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, but I've been. We went. Oh, the thing is with me is I'm. I was so excited to go to all of the kind of shitty American places like Red Lobster and Cheesecake Factory and like you know <laughs> Denny's. I was so excited to go to Denny's. So that's sort of where I've been going. So you know. It's that's right. Been, I've enjoyed it. Though. It's been great. And we're doing <laughs> Korean barbecue tonight, so that's something that they've yeah. never experienced. So we're going to take them to Korean barbecue. So that. that's going to be awesome. That's one of my favorite things. I'm to really do excited. Korean You've hyped it up a lot, though, so I hope it lives up to it. It will. I promise. Good. I promise. You guys are still going to be like, oh my god, I had no clue like this was going to be like this. It's that awesome. I'm excited. Well, the place you took us last night was really cool as well. Yeah, we so. went to Stone Brewing last night. And uh, that was great. Yeah, Had a really good place. time. Beautiful place. Brilliant. Um, hung out outside by the heat lamps and stuff, and it was cool. It's so nice. Yeah. Uh, here's a question for both of you. What's your favorite food? <laughs> um, I'm going to have to say mac and cheese, because I literally have mac and cheese every single day of this, <laughs> this holiday. So it's I'm a big cheese head. What can I say? I love it. Anything, anything with cheese is just, that's for me. I'll take it. Mexican food by far. Like I couldn't be without it. And keep in mind here in, in Escondido where we're at, um, we're like 25 miles from the border, right? So we do have some of the best Mexican food in the world, you know? Um, I mean, even some of the spots we go to are as good as being down in Mexico. Um, and this place, TJ Tacos, that we went to today is like that old school taqueria style uh, taco um, place where you have the the big you know thing of meat spinning you know slowly and being cooked and they're they're carving the meat right off of this big spinning piece of meat right into the, the tortilla freshly made by those tortillas are made right there they're making them and then they're frying them up and then put oh, it's pretty great <laughs> uh, it's so great i love that place so much and uh yeah it's, it's a place that i could definitely eat mexican food I could eat it every every meal of the day, every day. No problem. Tony's asking, Sophie, do you give online lessons? Uh, I do lessons on my Patreon, uh, which has been really good. Um, so we're sort of deciding whether we want to do live lessons or I've done a whole bunch of pre-recorded lessons as well. And then um, there might be something cool coming out for you guys. Lesson related soon. Woo! Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I think the wheel's in the corner, if you want Sophie oh, to spin. Oh, shit. I gotta do the fucking wheel. The wheel? Yeah. Well, the wheel. What's the wheel? So the wheel of doom. Oh my god. Doom you, and destruction. So the this wheel. Scary. So I'm gonna let you spin it, okay? And then, um, maybe we're gonna make you do this. So whatever it lands on. So go ahead okay. and spin it. <laughs> this is also one of the people. Okay. <laughs> I feel like I want a game show. <laughs> No. <laughs> Did I spin it too hard? <laughs> Usually sticks down. And, uh... <laughs> it just never stops. <laughs> Dang, man. That was a hard spin. What can I say? I'm a good spinner. You should have put the thing down. <laughs> I can't now. I did try to bend We've it committed. Down. We've committed. We've <laughs> committed. We have okay. to go all the way. <laughs> but here we go. So... 
going to spin forever. <laughs> right? Oh, shit. <laughs> it was like, looking like it was going to stop. What is it on? Oh, it stopped on this one. Story time. It did stop on story time, and then it started to go back. So you have story time. Okay. So what that means is you have to come up with a story. Oh, no. <laughs> so uh, how about a topic? Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, you have a good one? You have a good topic for her? Cheese. Oh, my God. I, Chris always does this to me where he always makes me like make up a bedtime story for him. <laughs> so I should be quite good at this. I have a hard time sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cheese. Well, so I just need to make up a story. Oh, no, no, no. So, so a story time would be um, uh, like a real true story. Oh. So yeah, so it would be like, like sometimes they'll give me a topic and I'll, they'll be like, oh, uh, racing and, you know, this or whatever. And I'll be like, oh, okay, yeah, well... This one time when we were racing, blah, 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 or, you know, like the craziest, uh, you could do something like the craziest uh, load in at a gig or like, you know, the craziest time crunch you had for like a gig you were doing, or it could be something about you guys, you know? What about uh, the most starstruck you've ever been? Okay, there you go. That's good. <laughs> um... And that comes into like a cheesy question as well. Technically. <laughs> um, oh, there, were, there was one time, there was this band called Fearless Vampire Killers that I used to absolutely love. Um, and we um, went to this Halloween party where they were in Camden, where they were sort of DJing and they were sort of going to be around. And I was so excited because I low key thought I like had a shot with them. I was like, oh, yeah, we're going to fall in love. Um, this was pre Chris and <laughs> last just, week. Yeah, yeah. this was like, like, um, and um, I went there, and obviously it was a Halloween party, so everyone was dressed up, and I was trying to find them, and I couldn't find them, and I was asking everyone, I was like, "Do you know where um, Kia Kemp is from Fearless Vampire Killers? Do you know where he is?" And I couldn't find him all night, and I got home, and um, I looked on like the Fearless Vampire Killer Instagram, and I realised I'd been asking Kia Kemp where he was to his face. So I was like. Hey, do you know where Kia Kemp is? And he was like, no. Even, but that was him. Like, I was, was literally asked. Yeah, because he was dressed up as like the guy, like the mask guy. Oh, and I was like proper fangirling. I was like, oh, he's so hot. Like, blah, blah, blah. And it was to him. It was very embarrassing. And then I saw him on a train and it was just, yeah. And I sort of was like, I'm so sorry for <laughs> embarrassing myself and completely fangirling over you, even though I didn't realize it was you. So. <laughs> <That's actually awesome. laughs> I like that one. That's pretty good. All right, what do we got? We got more questions, or is that it? We out of time? Okay, so for people to find out more about you, so, you know, if there's people on here that maybe don't know who you are, I mean, you have your Instagram, uh, and you have a YouTube channel. I do. And what is your Patreon? Uh, my Patreon is, Patreon. would be, yeah, just Sophie Lloyd, or Sophie Guitar, kind of, on Patreon. Um, I'm also on Twitch as well, which is Sophie Guitar. I'm doing uh, quite a lot over there at the moment. Um, uh, what else am I on? TikTok. Um, if any of you guys like that, I don't know. Uh, I don't post too much on there, but that's quite a fun one. Uh, what else do I do? Facebook, obviously. It's also either Sophie Lloyd or Sophie Guitar, one or the other. Usually the username's taken, so, you know, whichever one. Um, and, yeah, and also we've got an album coming out very soon called Imposter Syndrome, which is, uh, yeah, a collab album with different vocalists, and it's kind of about my, you know, story of uh, overcoming performance anxiety and imposter syndrome and everything and how everyone kind of feels the same so that's really cool it's got completely different songs on it from like metal uh to pop punk to you know sort of country rock it's a whole mixed bag of different things um so that's coming out really really soon so it would be cool if you guys could you know follow me to keep uh you know updates on that i don't know i'm not very good at asking people to follow me <laughs> follow her I mean, hey, you know, you're going to have some cool content. She's a great player. And, you know, I got to say, too, it was cool, you know, hanging out with, with the crew here because um, they're all just such great people, you know, and it just goes right back to what we want here at Kiesel. You know, we want people that are, we want to be around, you know, we want to have in our lives. And uh, it's just so great to, you know, you know, we knew that they were cool and stuff, obviously, you know, because uh, Chris Johnson, our AR guy, has spent a lot of time mm -hmm. with them. Chris is like, oh, they're great. You know, you guys are yeah, going to love, love them. Great. 
And then it was our time to finally like hang out, and it was just so great. Um, yeah, it was so fun. Like yeah. really, really good vibes. So yeah. well, we're gonna hang tonight. We got we got round two tonight. So. Oh yeah, just that's the thing on. I love about Kiesel is the community atmosphere. Like so many of like my mates that I've met online all like through Kiesel. You know, like Cole, are good mates with, and you know, it's really nice that there's. I feel like all Kiesel players are kind of a team. They all like band together. There's no like competition or anything. It's just like support for each other. And I think that's thing really, really cool that not other other guitar companies don't have is that sense of community. Yeah, I mean, that's important. I mean, we all uh, want to you know rally around each other like a family here. So definitely. Well, thank you all so much for uh, joining us. As always, if you have questions for my guys, you know, give them a call. Um, give the guys a call. Yeah, I check out the builder. <laughs> yeah, call the guys. Call the guys. <laughs> um, check out the builder. We got Pale Moon Ebony on there now. We have it the Crescent so Moon inlays too. Yeah, you'll spend hours on there. <laughs> yeah, and uh, order yours. You know, we're about twenty weeks out right now, so get that build going. Twenty percent deposit gets you get you started, and uh, twenty weeks is gonna go by quick. So uh, get that build in. And uh, 